Today, I will talk about how to do stable and practical AS relationship inference. This is a joint work with Colin, Amog, Vasilius, Arvin, and Scott. As many of you probably know, the internet is not a network of computers, but a network of networks. These networks are called autonomous systems, or AS in short. An AS is owned and administered by a single entity like Google, Comcast, and the University of Washington. It implements some set of policies in deciding how to route its packets to the rest of the internet via the Border Gateway Protocol, or BGP. The business relationship between ASs plays a crucial role when an AS decides to advertise and select routes. There are two prevalent forms of AS relationships, customer to provider and peer to peer. In a customer to provider relationship, the customer AS pays the provider AS for usability to the other ASs, while in a peer to peer relationship, two ASs agree to exchange traffic without any payment. The AS in relationships are hard for us to know because most ASs don't want to share their peering contracts, so they often keep their business relationships confidential. So if we want to know the AS relationships, we have to infer them in some way. AS relationship inferences are used in a wide range of application domains, such as understanding internet evolution, identifying malicious ASs, and detecting network congestion. It's actually a research problem which has been studied for almost two decades, starting with the seminal work by Gao in 2001. And the state-of-the-art inference algorithm, which is called AS rank, achieves 99% accuracy, which translates to only 1% error rate on an extensive validation dataset. This seems near perfect, but we are asking such a question. How does AS rank perform for actual applications? Let's take route leak detection as a concrete example. Route leaks are a class of common routing incidents which can cause large internet service disruptions. They are caused by violations of the policies among the ASs involved. For instance, Google's peer PCCW used to send traffic directly to Google to reach its prefixes. In the orange boxes, we show the AS path to reach one of Google's prefixes. On November 5, 2012, another Google's peer, Moreto, advertised its AS path to its provider, PCCW. PCCW then selected this route as the, one, uh, as the preferred one destined to Google because by forwarding traffic through its customer, it can generate revenue. As Moreto could not handle such large traffic volumes, Google's services could not be accessible in parts of Asia for half an hour. If PCCW knows it's a route leak, it can avoid selecting this route. So how can we detect such route leaks? Moreto validated a widely adopted rule called value-free assumption. The value-free value assumption says that a BGP path should consist of zero or more provider to customer links, followed by zero or one peer-to-peer -peer link, followed by zero or more provider to customer links. You can think of a customer to provider link as an uphill, peer to peer link as a cross, and the provider to customer link as a downhill. So the shape of a value free uh, path should be looking like going uphill, then going across at most one cross, then going downhill. We have two examples here. On the left, it satisfies value free assumption. On the right, the path creates a value because there is a cross after the downhill. The intuition of the value free assumption is that no ASs should have the incentive to forward other ones' traffic without being paid. So here, no one pays Moreto. So Moreto shouldn't have the incentive to carry traffic for its provider, PCCW. We adopted a conventional method for detecting route leaks by checking value free violations in BGP paths. Here, we also want to introduce how we derived the AS relationship validation dataset. As what uh, AS rank did, we used the AS relationships encoded using BGP community attribute. The BGP community attribute is a optional transitive BGP attribute used to attach metadata on BGP paths. Some ASs publicly document the meaning of some of their BGP community values. 
For example, Century Lake uses this uh, community value to tag routes received from its customers. In this way, we can construct a set of real AS relationships for validation purpose. With the validation dataset and the detection method for, for t uh, detecting relics, we can find real relics by checking value-free violations in BGP paths. We applied the inference results of AS rank to detect relics and found that the performance of AS rank on relic detection is surprisingly bad. It has low precision and low recall. Only 20% of the relics detected using AS rank were real relics, and it missed around 78% of the real relics. Here is the outline of this talk. We have already explained that the state-of-the-art AS rank algorithm does not meet the demands of actual applications with route leak detection as an example. We next develop a very simple algorithm called call to leave, which can achieve accuracy comparable to AS rank. This implies that most links in the validation dataset are actually very easy to infer. We then construct various subsets of the validation dataset that are hard to infer and use them as a benchmark for evaluation. We developed a probabilistic AS relationship inference algorithm called PropLink, which is stable and practical. To study why AS rank achieved near perfect accuracy on the validation dataset, but performs poorly on the ap actual applications, we developed a very simple algorithm called call to leap. It only takes three steps, whereas the AS rank algorithm takes 11 steps. Call to leap starts by inferring a transit free click. Uh, these are tier one ASs which are sitting at the top of the internet hierarchy. For example, the two Notes AS3356 and AS209 are identified as tier 1 ASs in step 1. For each path that traverses a tier 1, we skip the links before and after the tier 1 AS and label all the preceding links as customer to provider links and all the succeeding links as provider to customer links. This is solely based on the value free assumption. If the path were to contain a peer to peer link, it should be immediately before or after the tier one is. But note that a link could be labeled more than once if it shows up in multiple parts, and it is possible that the resulting labels are inconsistent. For instance, C is inferred as this provider on path one, but is inferred as this customer on path two. We label this link as a conflict link if we encounter such an inconsistency. Then we label all the remaining unclassified links as peer-to-peer -peer links. We evaluate this uh, simple algorithm called to leave and AS rank against the validation dataset. Surprisingly, call to leave achieves high precision and high recall, which are comparable to the performance of AS rank, and only a very small fraction of links are labeled as conflict. Notice that there is a small increase in accuracy for AS rank that translates to a significant increase in application level uh, accuracy. The reasons are that the violation data set is actually biased, and the small errors can lead to significant loss in application level accuracy. This result has two implications. One is that most links in the validation data set are easy to infer because the very simple algorithm like call to leave might be sufficient enough to infer most of the links correctly in the validation dataset. Second is that we have to make headway towards higher accuracy, and we do so by finding the hard links that current algorithms get wrong. The method we used to, to extract hard links is following. We construct a large set of features of every link and label the links according to whether they were inferred correctly or incorrectly by call to leave and AS rank. As we and we use gradient, uh, gradient boosting decision tree to calculate the feature importance when call to leave and AS rank make mistakes. We extract the following five categories of hard links suggested by the feature importance uh, analysis. We can see that the error rates of both call to leave and AS rank are high for these ca five categories of hard links. And more interestingly, 
the fraction of hard links in the validation dataset are three times fewer than that in the overall, uh, overall links, which means that the validation dataset is skewed to easy links. We will use these hard links as the benchmarks for evaluating AS uh, relationship inference algorithms and to see how will our proposed algorithm improve the accuracy on those uh, hard links. Our solution to the AS relationship inference is PropLink, which is a probabilistic AS relationship inference algorithm. We designed a bunch of features for capturing routing behavior. A link can be categorized by three attributes. The structure of the path that use the link, the structure of the paths that do not use the link, and the connectivity, uh, connectivity properties of the link. For each category, we designed one or more features. So the first feature is triplet feature. The triplet feature considers link triplets that appear in paths. For example, the links A, B, B, C, C, D with link types T1, T2, T3 constitute a link triplet. The intuition is that most triplets are value-free compliant, but we should tolerate some degree of value-free, some values, sorry. And the likelihood of values should be derived from data. What this triplet feature does is that it attributes probabilistic relationship uh, values for the relationships of the first and the last links given the relationship of the middle one. For instance, we would expect the probability of three back-to-back peer-to-peer links would be very small, but not necessarily zero. In addition to observed routes, unobserved routes also provide some information regarding AS relationships. The intuition behind the non-path feature is that if none of the peer-to-peer -peer and the provider to customer links coming into an AS are followed by a specific link, then this link is likely not a provider to customer link. For example, we can see a bunch of provider to customer links and peer to peer links coming into the node B. But we do not see the link BC following this provider to customer and peer to peer links in any of the BGP paths. Then the link BC is unlikely to be a provider to customer link. This is another probabilistic way of modeling the value free assumption but it considers the absence of a path as informative as opposed to the presence of a certain kind of path. So the last category of attributes we design is connectivity features. It consists of three separate features. The intuition behind the distance to cliff feature is that higher tier ASs are closer in, in terms of AS hops to the click ASs than the lower tier ASs and peer-to-peer -peer links are typically between the ASs in the same tier. The vantage point feature captures the point that provider to customer links are more likely to be seen by more vantage points. Some ASs are co-located in the same IXPs and peering facilities. We extract this information from peering DB and use it as a feature to model that the more ISPs or facilities two ASs are co-located in, the more likely that they are peering with each other. With all the features we designed, the prop, prop link algorithm works as following. It first uses call to leave to come up with an initial labeling. Then it computes the conditional probability distribution of each feature based on current labels. For example, for the vantage point feature, we compute the probability of different numbers, different numbers of vantage points observing a link given each link type. Then PropLink predicts new label for each link using naive base and the current conditional probability distributions of different features. This is an unsupervised approach that uses expect expectation maximization for parameter estimation in naive base classifier. Because in step two, we compute the feature distributions given current labels, and in step three, we update each link's label based on which is mostly likely given the current feature distributions. We repeat step two and step three until convergence. That is, the percentage of the labels, uh, 
uh, the percentage of the, lab, uh, the links that change their labels between each iteration drops below a certain small threshold. It also means that the conditional probability distributions of features also become stable. So how well does PropLink perform? Compared uh, to AS rank, PropLink reduces the error rate for all links in the validation dataset over the past six years by 1.7 times on average. And it reduces the error rate ranging from 1.8 to 6.1 times for various categories of hard links. AS rank's accuracy is quite unstable and is sensitive to snapshot selection. When being applied to 30 consecutive one-day snapshots, it yields a wide error, uh, error rate range, while PropLink is consistently stable. Remember that we built a relic detection system by detecting value-free violations in BGP Pass. We have applied PropLink, ASRank, and Kotlin to such a relic detection system for 10 consecutive days. We can see that PropLink achieves 81% precision and 76% recall on average, while ASRank and Kotlin have really bad performance. We also demonstrate the practical significance of our improvements by evaluating PropLink's impact on the other two applications. One is inferring complex relationships, and the other is predicting the impact of selective advertisements. But due to the time constraint, we only presented our improvements on rod leak detection. Please refer to the paper if you want more details. To conclude, we showed that high accuracy in validation dataset does not translate to high application level performance. We then used a very simple algorithm to demonstrate that most links in the validation dataset are easy to infer, and that the small improvements in the validation dataset accuracy could translate to significant improvement uh, on the application level gains. We therefore const constructed hard link sets that use them and use them as benchmarks. We developed PropLink, which allows for integration of many noisy but useful attributes. We demonstrate that PropLink is more effective and stable for real applications than previous techniques. Crucially, PropLink is a framework that can be further improved to improve the application level accuracy by integrating more useful features. Thanks for listening to the talk. Uh, Himanshu from Microsoft. Uh, so where do you run this problem? Like where in the whole system would you run it? Oh, and you mean the data set? Uh, no, I mean, is it every every AS, is it run in every AS somewhere, or is it run somewhere global? And Yeah, it's policy? somewhere global. You can imagine that in that way. Because the data set is from, uh, if you know, is from raw views and ripe. So it, there are uh, more than 1,000 vantage points listening to the BGP feeds, and it collects a BGP pass. So whoever runs this, what incentive do they have to run it? Uh, sorry? I'm saying whoever is going to run this piece, what incentive do they have? What do they get in return to do this job? Oh, so if you are an AS, you can run that locally uh, based on the BGP pass you receive, and you can detect like raw leaks or something. But now we are just uh, uh, run that as a global way. Hi, uh, Shiva, Hi. From, uh, Shiva from NYU. Uh, this is a good piece of work. Um, uh, you, you talked about uh, conflict links. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, did you did you also uh, infer uh, using your problem algorithm the uh, type of relationships for the conflict links, or did you eliminate them? So, so the conflict links inferred by call to leave the the very simple algorithm is actually so the. The simple, which means that the simple algorithm does not have the capability to infer the links correctly because the uh, conflict links it should be falling into some uh, some some kind of uh, AS relationship that uh, like peer to peer or uh, provider to customer or customer to provider, but Kotlin fails to infer them. But 
in PropLink, we can directly infer, uh, infer any link to be in, in a specific category of uh, AS relationship. Okay, so Cotaleaf and PropLink are sort of uh, comparable in that sense. The both of them are. Your yeah, so uh, so the Cotaleaf is just a very simple algorithm, which are we are trying to uh, point out that a very simple algorithm can can be su uh, sufficient enough for most of links for inferring most of the links in the validation data set. So it only takes the three steps, but the AS rank uh, algorithm uh, takes eleven steps. So basically, we are trying to point out that most links are easy to infer. And we also use the conflict link and the unlabeled uh, links in, uh, in, the, in the call to leave as a hard link data set. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Any more questions? Um, okay, I can ask you one. Yeah, sure. Uh, so one problem with using an, uh, li the absence of a link in the AS path yeah. is that you suddenly become uh, sensitive to temporal variance. So like at some, you, you don't know at the point where you got the right view uh, data that you were not in convergence. Uh, yeah, so, exactly. So how do you deal with that problem? Yeah, so basically all the inference uh, algorithms they uh, they all run that based on like one day snapshot, so it's sufficiently long enough already. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, let's thank the speaker again.